This is the ultimate guide to charging your Citroen Ami in the UK. I know a number of you that have bought or are buying a Citroen Ami have questions about charging it. For a lot of people out there who are perhaps new to electric vehicles and Ami is their first experience of one, or people that are maybe used to more conventional electric vehicles that are not 100% sure what the charging situation looks like. And in this video, I'm gonna clear that up both for home and for public charging. Before we get into it, let's talk about charging the Ami in general. So it comes with an EU two pin plug on a tether cable that's built into the car. So despite it being a UK model sold and delivered by Citroen UK, it has an EU plug, but It'll also come with one of these for it, which is a Type 2 adapter for plugging in to a Type 2 EV charge point. And that is the standard for EV charging in the UK. The EVs should come with Type 2 charging, and so the AMI does. And that causes quite a lot of confusion amongst a lot of people, I think, uh, because they're expecting it, I think, to come with a, a UK 3-pin plug, because a, a bit in France and in other European countries, a big deal is made out of the fact you can just plug it into a standard domestic outlet. Unfortunately, in the UK, the official line is that you charge it on type two using one of these. So home charging then, what do you do? Well, if you have an EV charge point, an untethered EV charge point, you can just plug it in using type two and it will charge absolutely fine. The adapter has two switches on it. And what they do is they simulate the signal that the car normally sends to the charge point. One of those is to activate and deactivate the locking mechanism, which locks the plug into the unit. And the other is to tell the unit to start charging. Normally your car does that without thinking about it. So something like my, my other EV, my BMW i3, it'll do that. Uh, the car takes care of all of that. It communicates with the charger, tells it what to do. Because AMI just has an EU two pin plug, there's no communications there. So that needs to be taken care of by the adapter. So if you're gonna plug it in to a type two socket, you plug it in. This first switch controls the locking mechanism. So you turn that on. And then the next one controls the request for power. So you turn that on and it starts charging. Very straightforward, very reliable, but maybe just a little bit different to what you're used to if you're used to just plugging in and away it goes. One point of note for home charging on type two is if you have a tethered EV charger, like one of these, it will not work. So it might look like you can plug this into the end of the cable that you've got because they will physically fit together, but it will not start charging. And that is a deliberate design in the type two standard to stop you from daisy chaining cables together. So unfortunately, if you've got a tethered EV charger at your home and you're hoping to charge AMI on it, that's not going to be possible for you. That is a limitation of the type two design. What I would do about that if I was you, I'm not 100% sure. I think with enough technical knowledge and the right parts, you could build an adapter that would basically create a socket that this could plug into, but that again probably isn't very recommended. I appreciate you're not going to want to swap out your tether charger for an untether one because that's going to be costly. Uh, if you've paid, you know, these days the going rate for an EV charger is about a thousand quid. If you've already committed to that for tethered, you're not going to be very happy, unfortunately. And I suspect what you want to do is go down the sort of three pin socket route, which I'm going to talk about next. For a lot of you, you're probably wondering, well, I, I don't want to go to the expense of fitting a Type 2 charger. I just want to plug it in. I, I, I can't stress enough that it, it goes against the official advice. So the official advice from Citroen is that you plug it into Type 2 and that's how it should be charged. But I know that people are going to charge using a 3-pin socket. Like, it's absolutely inevitable. But what is really important is that not all EU to UK adapters are made equally. So there's quite a lot of them around that are, you know, really cheap, really nasty and probably intended more for you know plugging in a mobile phone charger or something like that if you're uh you know in the uk and you've got something with an eu plug on it you're going to use for a very short period of time you're not going to worry about it i think people underestimate is that although ami charges at a slower rate than other evs it still draws a constant eight amps when it's plugged in so then people say well my kettle draws more than that but the difference is your kettle isn't plugged in for three hours drawing its maximum power for three hours this car will be 
and so I think you need to be a little bit sensible and a little bit careful. What I've got here, and then this is an extension lead, but they make this in uh, like an adapter version too, which just had a very short cable between the plug and the socket. So this is from Tough Leads and it has an EU socket, or, you know, um, IP rated EU socket you can plug into, and then a decent quality UK three pin plug on the other end. And this is a fairly thick, decent uh, cable. It's not underrated for the current and that it's decent it's going to be what you want and i would always recommend i think something of, of of good quality it doesn't need to be from tough leads they're a they're a good uk based supplier of kind of stuff but there are other options available but i would definitely recommend something like this now obviously you don't need you know if you don't need a 10 meter long one like this then you can get one that's more suitable to your needs but i would definitely recommend something of good quality like that over you know, something dubious of unknown origin that you've bought on, you know, eBay or something like that, that, that might not necessarily be up to scratch. But it's up to you to be careful, do your research and make sure what you're buying is, is of decent quality. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to get an official sanction from anyone to, to plug in the three pin socket and charge Ami that way. It's always going to be a little bit frowned upon. But I think if you're a little bit sensible about it, you'll be fine. At the end of the day, they are charged like that in France and in other countries. I think as long as you're not doing something really silly or plugging it into a socket that's a bit dodgy or, you know, be sensible, understand the condition of the electrical installation that you're, you're plugging in. So when I do it, um, the garage here has a dedicated three pin socket that it's on its own circuit. I charge the i3 on the granny charger using that socket and it's absolutely fine for that too. But as always, be a bit conscious, think a bit more about what you're doing and, and don't sort of take it for granted that it'll be absolutely fine. Next up then is public charging and to demonstrate that and tell you a bit more about that we'll need to go to a public charger. So off we go then shall we? So one important point of note about public chargers is that AMI charges at the same rate no matter where you plug it into. So that eight amps I talked about before, so just under two kilowatts, that is the rate it will charge at no matter what type of charger it's plugged into. So if you're looking for a public charger using something like ZapMap, for example, which is a great way to find EV chargers wherever you need to be, I would recommend looking for some seven kilowatt type two chargers because you can't make use of anything more. Now whilst it will work if you plug it in, if you can plug it in, and we'll talk about that a bit more, it will work if you plug it into chargers with the, that can deliver higher power because at the end of the day the, the charger will only deliver what the car is capable of so you don't need to worry too much about that. It does mean that you, you could be taking up a resource that someone that could make better use of it could be using. So I think generally if you can, looking for 7 kilowatt or even 3.6 kilowatt, they do exist, um, AC chargers is the way to go uh, and, and only use sort of what your car is capable of. But if you were stuck and you had to charge, again, you can, you can plug into a 22 kilowatt AC charger and it'll be absolutely fine. What you definitely need to avoid if you're looking for chargers at all, any CCS or Chadable DC rapid chargers, they're no use to you whatsoever. It needs to be AC, it needs to be type 2. Uh, that is crucial when you're trying to find the charger that will work for your vehicle. We're going to go to a Tesco store. Um, a lot of Tesco stores have chargers. Uh, and, and so it's a pretty good place to start. Uh, all of the all of the chargers at all Tesco stores are provided by PodPoint. So if you downloaded the PodPoint app, you could use that to, to have a look at what stores have chargers. And it's a pretty good, pretty reliable place to get a charge if you're looking for AC charging. So we're back at the same Tesco store that featured in the pumpkin video. Uh, the first one I tried, that all the chargers were in use. So clearly, Tesco switching to charging people to use their EV chargers hasn't put everybody off because all four of them were in use, which you don't actually see very often. Even when they were free, you didn't see that often.
I think for any AMI owners that are going to do any amount of public charging, these will be the types of charger you'll be using the most. 7 kilowatt AC destination chargers. Now, a destination charger, as the name implies, tends to be in areas where you're going to spend a little bit of time. So Tesco have lots of them at their stores. Now, the merits of that are debatable, given how long a lot of people think they spend in a store at least but they must think it has merit you'll also find them at other places your know, train stations cinemas tourist attractions all sorts of different places where you would be likely to park up for two or three hours and then, so you can plug in you can charge and they, they definitely are the most effective types of public charging to use with ami so we're going to plug in to this charger at tesco and i'm going to show you how it works so we plug the adapter in with the two switches turned off we flick the one closest to the unit on followed by the other one on and then the light goes solid green and that means that it's charging the next step that you need to do on these particular units by pod point is in the pod point app you need to find the unit that you're using so the name and the door number are on the side of the unit and you need to confirm your charge in the app now since the 1st of November at Tesco, this means that you confirm that you're paying the 28 pence per kilowatt hour for your charging. Previously, it just meant that the charging would continue. Uh, so it would confirm and it would log in the app that you've been charging and tell you how much, uh, how many units of electricity you consumed, all that kind of stuff. Now it is linked to how you pay. So you top up your PodPoint account with a little bit of money and then any charging that you use is deducted from your balance. It's all fairly straightforward, although I do appreciate that it has a little bit of a learning curve for people that are new to EVs. And I think the, the biggest thing that you might struggle to get your head around is different apps for different operators. Generally, as a rule of thumb, the operator's name will be printed on the charge point somewhere. So these ones are pod point. It says pod point on them in fairly big letters. That's not always particularly obvious. Um, one thing I will say is pod point do all of the charging at all Tesco stores. So if you're at Tesco, it will be a pod point charger you'll be using. But unfortunately with others, you're gonna to have to determine which it is and make sure you're using the right app or whatever for access. Contactless payment, unfortunately, it hasn't quite made it to destination chargers. I, I, I don't know why, I'm guessing maybe the sums of money involved because they're a little bit cheaper to use. They deliver less, you know, like a rapid will give you loads of, of energy really quickly. So the, the average transaction amount will be a little bit higher than perhaps it is with destination chargers and that might be one reason why contactless payment hasn't quite made it to destination chargers yet and they do tend to be quite app heavy i'd always recommend to anyone they download the pod point app if they're new to evs and they want to explore public charging a little bit because they do tend to be in places like tesco or other supermarkets quite easy to access and you can as, as an introduction to public charging they're very easy to use and I think it's a good place to start. And they do also still have some free chargers dotted around here and there, just not at Tesco stores any longer. Next up, I'm gonna to head to another site where we're gonna look at rapid chargers and why you probably shouldn't use them, but you can if you really need to. So rapid chargers are the second type of charger I want to talk about in this video. Just like this Osprey charging rapid behind me here. I'm in a pub car park, which is a little bit of a strange location for rapid chargers, but they do have, Osprey especially do have them in a number of pub car parks across the country. But you'll tend to find them more often than not, like service stations or dedicated charging hubs or places like that. I mean, a lot of places where Ami probably doesn't really belong. The important point of note is that although they are rapid chargers and they are intended to provide a rapid charge and, and lots and lots and lots well most evs can make use of that i mean cannot so they really want to be your sort of last resort for two different reasons so first of all they do tend to be a bit more expensive to use this one is 79 pence per kilowatt hour recently reduced from a pound um but 79 pence per kilowatt hour is, is very quickly becoming the de facto price point for rapid charging and that's because the equipment costs a lot of money, it costs a lot to maintain. It's a lot, lot more involved than just putting a socket in a car park like most destination chargers are. So they do tend to cost more to use. But the second reason really is, is more one of sort of etiquette. So 
if someone was to actually need a, a more rapid charge, so this will deliver 22 kilowatts on the AC connector that we're using, uh, and we're currently using about a tenth of that, it's not really great form. The other thing you need to watch out for with Rapids is that some of them actually have a tethered AC cable, so you will not be able to plug into them for the same kind of reasons I mentioned earlier about home chargers. So you must make sure if you're planning a journey and it's, it's going to depend on one, that it's actually one that would be compatible with AMI at all. I found that it was a little bit fiddly to get it started. I don't know if it's 100% friendly with the Type 2 adapter, but it did get there in the end. It took a couple of attempts. Um, displayed like a starting charge error a couple of times, but it did eventually get going there. To be honest, I've had the same experience with DC charging on these particular Osprey units. So I don't know if they're just maybe not the most reliable or if the type two adapter and the AMI and then the sequence of it, uh, locking in the cable and requesting power are maybe not quite in the, in the sort of timing that the, the thing expects because you're doing it manually and not, you know, the car doing it. I don't know what the score is there, but it does work. We are charging, charging as slowly as you would anywhere else. And that's the one thing I think you need to remember. But on the whole, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, these particular units use contactless payment. And I think that's one thing that will definitely separate Rapids from destination chargers is the vast majority of destination chargers use some kind of app to start a charge. The vast majority of Rapids these days you can use contactless payments. So they're a bit easier, a bit less faffing. Although what you might, what a lot of people will do is use an app like Bonnet, uh, which which brings a number of charging networks together, like Osprey and a lot of others. Uh, it gives you a, a bit of a discount on your, your charging if you charge often. And it, it can be a good option for people that, that are charging in public all the time. I suspect for AMI owners, that's not gonna be the case. I guess well, a lot of their charging at home or charging on destination chargers is probably going to be the way forward and like I say you should probably avoid using rapid chargers like this where possible but it is possible if they're untethered and, and that is that is key they need to be untethered or you're not going to have any success at all what I'd maybe recommend doing if you're scouting out a given location you look on zap map people often post photos of, of charge points for some reason I guess to pr prove they're working and if you can see that the AC cable is actually a tethered cable and not a socket like this one you're going to have to stay away from that one because it's not going to work. But all in all, it is possible to use a charger like this with AMI. I wouldn't particularly recommend it unless you're stuck, but it is possible, it does work, and you can do it. So that was a guide to charging AMI, whether you're at home, whether you're using destination chargers at a supermarket or somewhere like that, or whether you're venturing into the realms of possibly using rapid chargers. But how much would any of that cost? So, he has a 5.5 kilowatt hour battery. Now, for discharge it fully, so you should never really need the full amount of energy to go into the battery, but if you run it down really low, that will probably be about right. But there are also charging losses, so the char charging process isn't 100% efficient, so there'll be some losses. So let's say, that to charge it fully it takes six kilowatt hours okay if you're like me lucky enough to still be on the old five pence octopus go night rate that could cost you as little as 30 pence to charge we're talking about motoring for less than a penny a mile if we use the 46 miles 30 pence to charge less than a penny a mile it doesn't get any cheaper than that if you're on the new 12 pence night rate with octopus go that will cost you 72 pence to charge so that's one and a half pence per mile. So we're really, we're starting to get quite expensive now. Charging at Tesco is 28 pence per kilowatt hour. So that would cost you £1.68 to charge your AMI. And that would be a cost per mile of just under four pence, so 3.6, 3.7 pence per mile. Even that I think is pretty reasonable. If you're on the 34 pence per kilowatt hour domestic price cap, that will cost you just over two pounds for a full charge. So that'd be just over four pence per mile. And we're, so we're still talking about some really, really cheap motoring. And you know, just to, to illustrate the point, even if you charge on an Osprey Rapid, it's 79 pence per kilowatt hour, which is about as expensive as public charging gets now. It'd be just over four pounds 70 to charge. So just over 10 pence per mile for your 46 miles. So I think all in all, I think it's safe to say that AMI is fairly cheap to run and you shouldn't need to worry too much about the running costs. I mean, you will, if you ever find yourself charging at 79 pence on a rapid, you're not going to be doing it for very long. You're certainly not going to be there for a full charge, I don't think. And so a quick top up just to make sure you definitely make it home. It's going to be nothing in the grand scheme of things. And if you're charging at home on this current price cap, 
you know, motoring for four pence a mile, I don't think you can go wrong with that at all. I hope this video was very helpful. If you've got any more questions about charging, anything you don't think I've covered in this video, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.